Hi, this is Megan Keen with Avid Artist Relations here in Park City, Utah for Sundance 2011. And I am here with director Steve James, also editor and co-editor and post-production supervisor Aaron Wickenden. Um, their film Interrupters is part of the documentary premieres section here at the festival. Um, Steve, tell me a little bit about the inception of this film and how it came together. Well, the film was uh, inspired by an article by my uh, partner in the film, Alex Kotlowitz, producer on the film. He did for the New York Times Magazine on ceasefire and these violence interrupters program where these uh, uh, violence interrupters are ex-gang members who would go out in the communities where they're from with their ear to the ground and they try to mediate crises, prevent violence on the front end or prevent retaliation. So I read Alex's article and we'd been looking, we've been friends for years and we've been looking for something to do together and I, so I called him up and I said, what about this? This could be a great documentary, I think. And he agreed, so. And so what was the process of, of actually selecting the characters that you finally ended up working with? Well, in, in the films that I've done, it's always a bit of a process. Uh, uh, you know, we went and met with various interrupters. Alex had interviewed a lot of the interrupters for his article, so he, he knew the landscape pretty well. And we identified Amina Matthews, for example, as somebody we definitely wanted to follow. But both Kobe and Eddie, the, the other two interrupters that end up being a focus in the film, they kind of found us in some ways. They, they kind of emerged from the group of guys and sort of made themselves characters in a way. And, and so it was this sort of organic process. And I know that oftentimes with, with uh, fiction features that editing will sort of keep on pace with shooting, but a lot of times for documentary that's not feasible. But for you guys, you're on a really shortened time frame. So can you tell me a little bit, uh, Aaron, about when you came on and how that worked? Sure, yeah. I started editing on the project in, a, in about January, I think, okay. um, while the production was still going on. Um, they'd filmed a significant amount at that point, but not the bulk of the film. Um, so my role at that point was cutting individuals standalone scenes, components of the project that are still part of the, the finished film as you see it now, um, as well as cutting demos and, and other items that we use for fundraising. And Steve, why was that important for that to be happening while, while you were shooting? Well, because um, we were on a pretty short timeline. And also, it's really helpful to be able to see scenes being cut while you're out there shooting because it, it, it raises... Um, issues or questions about things that you need to get better or raises a question about something that would be interesting to get. It helps focus your thinking in the field about where the story is going. And so, I mean, I think it's invaluable. And there's no way we could have been here at Sundance a year later after he started with this film if he hadn't been doing this from last January on. And so how were you um, formatting these scenes, organizing them in order for to Steve to be able to use them in conjunction with shooting? Yeah, generally we, we try to cut scenes about, you know, a target length is about three minutes to five minutes long, so I'd approach a, um, you know, a couple hours worth of footage generally and look and edit and review it and talk to Steve at some length about how, how we're going to take that and, and pare it down. What is what is the purpose of this? Even if we didn't know what the overall structure was going to be, what was what was the strength in the material? Um, what what were things that, that he remembered from the shoot that needed to be in there? Um, and then sort of starting with those key moments and building the scene around it, trying to keep it as close to about three to five minutes as possible, then knowing that when it came time to whittle the film down, ultimately those scenes would get a lot shorter. And this wasn't the first time that you two have collaborated in, in post. So when you um, came into the edit toward the latter part of the process, um, was it fairly seamless because of your collaborative efforts in the past? Oh yeah, with the, we've kind of worked this way um, before and especially on the last film that, that Aaron and I edited together, which was At the Death House Door. So. This film, like that film, we had two avid media composers going in tandem um, once I entered the process. So that even though I was more engaged in, in sort of starting to try to rough out a structure and editing scenes as I went that hadn't been gotten to, Aaron continued to kind of leap ahead of me and we talk about, okay, there's a sequence gonna be coming up in the next half hour where I think we're gonna wanna do this and he would start to put that sequence together, then I, he, he could send it to me, I could put it into the cut or I could send him more notes to revise it. So it was a great back and forth, you know, we're not in the same place but we're, you know, we're in the same space, you might say. <laughs> right, and, and you, you guys mentioned that, that it was sort of touch and go as to whether or not you were actually even going to submit for the festival because of how short you, you know, had really been working on the film. Um, how was that final 
decision made and, and how was it when you found out that, that the film was accepted? Well, we we had a late deadline that, that we could submit to near the end of October, but when the end of October rolled around, the film was four hours and eight minutes long. And so I told David Courier, one of the Sundance programmers here, you know what, I just think it's impossible. And he said, wow, it's too bad, disappointed, but four hours and eight minutes, I understand why you're saying that. <laughs> um, then a week later, we had a change of heart, and we felt like we could we could possibly make it because we got some great feedback from our colleagues about the film and and it seemed that we were on the right track structurally in a lot of ways so it was more about making some hard decisions about scenes and then just really cutting stuff down so we did cut it down quite a bit it's still a long film it's two hours and 40 minutes long but it was a madhouse but we were able to to get here with a film that we're really proud of and we were really excited about great and so what's what's next for the interrupters for, for the interrupters, the film. Uh, what's well, you know? Uh, hopefully, the interrupters will be on tour with the film. Um, but but yes, I mean we've got some several festivals already lined up, which we're very excited about. Um, it, it will eventually be on Frontline um, later in the year. Uh, but we're also hopeful that we could get it into some theaters, and also just as importantly, get it into some communities through an outreach program into the very communities that this film is about. Great. Well, thank you guys for taking the time and congratulations on your success thus far. Uh, be sure to check out The Interrupters either here at the festival or when it's available near you.